Good morning, gorgeous. How are you this morning? I hope you're doing wonderful. Welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Daph. Today we're talking about slow living as a feminine woman. We're going to talk about what it means to live slowly and how that impacts your femininity. This is a movement that's kind of been moving throughout social media and I'm here for it because it truly does tie right in with femininity. So I'm excited. I want you to get something warm to drink. Just cozy up wherever you are and let's talk about this. What is slow living? Have you heard the term before? It's something that has been taking speed through social media and it kind of started off with minimalism and people sort of deciding what was important in their lives and it trickled into this idea of slow living. For those of you who have never heard of slow living, what it means is taking life at a very delicate pace, taking the time to have meaningful connections, meaningful interactions, enjoying the moment, taking things in. We live in a very fast paced world where things are constantly happening. Images are being thrown at us. Information is being thrown at us. We are just always trying to move on to the next thing. What's happening here? What should I be doing? What should I be buying? How should I be looking? We're consumed by this world. And a lot of us do not really live. We just exist and move around like robots. Slow living is taking the time to live a more meaningful life. It's saying no to all of the different things that are pulling at your life in every direction. Saying no to things, saying no to people, saying no to entertainment. It's learning how to say no to yourself and not feel like you have to go to a coffee shop every single day and get a coffee. <laughs> Even though that's wonderful and that's fun, you don't have to do it every single day. Learning how to say, I've, I've had enough. I've had three coffees this week or I've had three coffees this morning. That's enough. Learning some self-discipline and instead doing things that are going to lengthen your life, help your body, help the world. It's also this process of not over consuming in terms of like being a super shopaholic and over consuming goods, but learning how to choose quality things over quantity. And for everyone, this looks different, but quality things are going to not only last longer, but typically they're also better for you. So instead of always having to have what everyone on your timeline has, you're taking the time to get what you really desire. What are the things that really make you happy? How can you pour more into those things? Whether it's clothing, fragrance, home goods, food, all of these things. When we live in this fast paced society, it leads to a lot of competition, a lot of stress. Now, don't get me wrong, it's wonderful to live in a world that is blessed with technology and information and opportunities. A lot of these issues I'm going to talk about today are first world problems. They're sometimes even a blessing to have as a problem. But what happens is that we sometimes get so caught up in all the things that we have that we miss out on the things that matter that other people who we consider less fortunate actually have and thrive off of. And that's why you go to other countries sometimes and you see the people are happier. You see they have better skin. <laughs> they seem to enjoy the small things that you take for granted. And you wonder how they have this when they don't have all the luxuries that you have. Well, because they don't have those luxuries. They have the real luxury sometimes, the things we take for granted. And when we are living in this fast paced world, this consumer society, we end up having to deal with a lot of competition. When you're scrolling through your timeline, you're looking at everyone else's Thanksgiving outfits, Christmas cards, the gifts that they're receiving and buying and where they're going for vacation. You feel sometimes like you're not doing enough, that you're left out. You feel 
like a loser or like a boring person because you're not always on the go. And that can also lead to a lot of stress feeling like you're not doing enough when you're doing enough. I remember after I graduated from college, I was always, always, always on the go. And I moved back home for a little bit with my mom. And I remember in one afternoon, I would go shopping, I would go to lunch, then I would meet up with someone for dinner, meet up with someone for drinks, go to the movies afterwards, and then come home and then wake up the next morning and go to church and just do a ton of things in one day. And I just remember thinking like, I'm always tired. (laughs) I'm doing so much, my days are packed. I'm having to make plans, I'm forgetting about plans, I'm regretting plans, this is too much. And I would walk past my mom and I would say, what are you doing today, right? And she would say, oh, I'm just gonna go to Target. I'm like, that's your day? You're gonna go to Target? That's all you're gonna do today? (laughs) And I would think that was so boring. But in reality, she she's lived her life. She doesn't care about going to all these functions and activities and being on the scene and shopping and all of that. She just feels like an afternoon going to the store, taking it easy. That's a blessing. That's relaxing. That's fulfilling to her. And as I've gotten older and wiser, I have learned why it was so important for her to model the idea of relaxing and taking it slow and not overdoing things and not having time to just be so that she's available for her family. So I know I've kind of been a little bit all over the place and talking about what slow living is. Online, there is a lot of content on this lifestyle and you may have already been exposed to it. People are creating blogs and videos about slow living. They're showing you what slow living looks like, which is beautiful. It's very relaxing content. The people are normally speaking a very calm voice. They're showing a lot of nature and it's beautiful. The one thing that I have also noticed though, is that a lot of these vloggers are people who live in these like rural areas. They live in the woods, they live on an island, they live in a forest, they live in a cottage. They live in these places that are not accessible for everyone. It sounds so beautiful to live slow in your cottage and bake your bread and grow your potatoes and eat from the earth and just look out and watch the birds and hear the river. And that's so nice for us to consume, but In terms of incorporating that into our lives, what if you live in a big city? What if you live in the projects? What if you live somewhere that's not scenic? How are you going to incorporate slow living into your lifestyle? So something I want you to know is that when it comes to slow living, it's not an aesthetic. It's not a filter. It's not a stock video. It's a mindset. It's a mentality. It's a mindset of saying that I'm choosing to live this boring, slow life so I can really enjoy my moments, enjoy my money, enjoy my food, enjoy my body, enjoy my health, enjoy my life without feeling like I need to always be on the go. And if you are someone who enjoys vlogs, then I invite you to actually go on my vlog channel. I have a separate channel where I just do like day in the life content. And I have videos from when I was in my 20s and I was living like a crazy busy body. (laughs) And I want you to see how much I have changed as a person from that content to what you see today. And this came from me deciding to incorporate this mentality of taking my life slower. This is important because when it comes to these things in life, a lot of times, unfortunately, women are not equal in this. Women of color, oftentimes Black women, are not given enough opportunities or enough exposure to these kinds of lifestyles, to taking things slow. As Black women, we are usually in that mentality of having to be in our masculine, having to 
hustle and push and never sleep and work, 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 work in order to have things, have bags and purses. And you see influencers posing and dripping from head to toe in designer things. And we think, oh, this is how you know you've made it. This is how you know you're hot. It's because you have all this flashy stuff that costs so much money and is actually meaningless in the long run. Most of the content I see on Slow Living, they're not Black people, they're not women of color. And so it is important for me to expose you to this for those ladies who've never heard of this, who want to incorporate this into their life because it's for you. It's for you as well. It's for everyone. And knowing it's okay and seeing examples of that is what helps you to start including this into your life. It's so interesting. For those of you who've watched me for a very long time, you've seen my content transition in so many ways. And I have seen this like linear transition of how these things all really fit into femininity. Minimalism, which is content I used to do, which talked about me having less, having less clothes, having less things, and living with less transitioning that into femininity, which now I've seen online, people have taken femininity and have kind of twisted and turned it and moved it around to their liking to transition into this idea of a soft life, which is literally femininity, <laughs> which is literally slowing down, gaining boundaries, learning how to love and own your life and has now moved on into this idea of slow living. It's all part of femininity. It's all part of you deciding that as a woman, you are going to take the time to enjoy the process, enjoy the things. If you're cleaning your house, you're not always having to listen to a podcast and listen to TV and listen to music. You can do things in silence. You can think you can see how things make you feel and then make decisions off of how you feel. You can walk into your home and you can ask yourself, how do I feel being in this home? Do I feel rushed? Do I feel dirty? Do I feel uncomfortable? Do I feel like this is complete peace? This is how you get to start this transition to slow living. What is making me feel so antsy? What is it about this place? Do I need to change the environment? This is all something that you're going to have to ask yourself in relation to your life. How can you slow down? Because listen, when things happen in life, life is life, right? And great, wonderful, happy things happen in life. And a lot of unhappy, unfortunate things also happen in life. When you are a woman who is in her masculine energy and you're always doing, or maybe you're not in your masculine energy, but you are constantly having to be doing things. And I'm not talking about like an ADHD type of doing things. I mean, feeling like doing certain things is what makes you important, what makes your life meaningful. Going from activity to activity, from brunch to date night to this and that and this and that, and your calendar is stacked. When something happens in life that's not so pleasant, it is very difficult to stay on top of these things. And that's what causes so many mental health issues in people is that once something happens, because their life was so full of chaos, they feel like they've left life. And that's even more depressing, not only the incident, but to feel like now your life is done or not the same or worse or over because you can't keep up with the pace of life. You don't want to be on social media. You don't want to go to that party. You don't have enough money to buy the clothes you used to buy. Maybe you lost your job and you don't have the social you know, activities that you used to have or the ability to just go to a dinner that costs $200 on a Saturday night like you used to have. Whatever it is, you may not have the internal energy and strength and you feel even worse. But when you live a life that's slow and intentional and beautiful, God forbid when things happen, you're able to still be in a flow because you have incorporated so much room for peace. 
So let's talk about some ways that you can slow down. Some ways that you can take in your environment, take in your life and intentionally live it. One way you can do this is by downsizing your social commitments. Our schedules a lot of times are just too packed. There are so many things that we feel like we have to do that we actually don't have to do. Or we can do it in a different way. For example, those of you who maybe work a full-time job, but then you need to, of course, exercise and eat well because then otherwise you feel like crap. Well, maybe instead of having to go to the gym, which is like a 20 minute drive and you're stuck in traffic and all of that, you can start walking in your neighborhood or walking in a neighborhood that you enjoy. And it doesn't have to be every day. You can decide, I want to do this on the weekends. I want to take a hike instead of going to the gym. I want to explore and be in a new environment and be inspired by this beautiful neighborhood that I want to live in one day, or I want to see more nature. I want to breathe in better air and gifting yourself with some peace and some simplicity. If you have children, this is also really important. A lot of times we as parents want the best for our children, obviously, and we stack up their lives at a young age with a ton of activities. And we feel like we're exposing them to things, this is the time to really get it in, but they're also learning. And a lot of children feel very bogged down and stressed out by the amount of activities that they're involved in. They're not getting enough time to practice and rest and enjoy their family. And you might think, well, if they're at home, they're just going to be watching video games or they're going to be online and I want them to be busy. You want them to be active, but you don't want them to be overly busy because, again, it causes issues later on in life. So taking out one of the activities because you don't need to have football, soccer and basketball in the same season. You don't need to have her in dance class, art class, and choir. You don't have to. You can take one thing off of the table and enjoy that time together doing something else. Maybe look up some arts and crafts that you can do with your child or some activities that you can do together, something you like to do when you were younger, and do it at home with your child instead of sending them off to practice. You can still use up that time, but in a more intentional and in a more beautiful, meaningful way. It's also a beautiful way to slow down by eating from the earth. We live in a fast world, right? And a lot of this fast paced society leads us to eating fast food. And it's called fast food for a reason. Yes, it's convenient. Yes, it tastes good. But is it actually good? Is it actually going to help your body? You are aging every single day, which is a blessing. But some of us are speeding up the way that our body is looking and feeling and behaving because of what we eat. I mentioned earlier that a lot of the slow living content is like people who are growing their own food, which is great. If you're able to grow one thing, maybe some basil or something simple, grow it. It's actually a beautiful thing to be able to watch something grow. <laughs> so grow one thing and use it in your meals. But I'm not saying go out and create an entire lifestyle that's different than what you're used to. But you can choose to eat healthier. And it doesn't mean that every single meal, every single day is going to be like this. But you can intentionally say, for breakfast, I'm going to eat from the earth. Or for dinner, my family is going to eat from the earth and keep it at that. Our bodies were made from the dirt. Okay, we were made from God, from the dirt. So if we're made from the earth, then we should feed ourselves from the earth. We don't need processed food that's going to make us sick. You want to live and you don't want to live in a hospital. You want to live in the world with people you love. And the only way to do this for a long time is to feed yourself things that will make your body better. 
So when you go to the grocery store, take time and look at the tomato and feel it and be excited about eating it. Be excited about eating things that are going to make your skin look better. We spend so much money on products for everything, for our hair, for our skin, for our nails, for all of this stuff could really be eradicated with eating cleaner, which is difficult sometimes and it can be expensive depending on how old you are. But again, you can commit to one thing, one salad a day, one meal can be from the earth. And speaking of eating, I actually, I'm going to do a video specifically about food <laughs> because I love talking about food and we a lot of times stuff our faces with food without thinking about what we're putting in our mouth. So food is a conversation that does need to be talked about. And it's a really big part of being a feminine woman. And we have to talk about it. So I am going to do a video talking specifically about eating. But eating sitting down is another really important way that you can live slower. If you're a busy mom or a busy woman, you probably eat on the go. You're eating in your car. You're dropping onions and fries all over your seat, all over your clothes. You're eating running around. You're eating standing up at home. This is very common. Sit down, sit down and enjoy your meal. And I know you might say, well, it's impossible. I have three kids are all running around driving crazy. Then before they eat, you eat. You sit down while they're running around and you eat your food and then you monitor them afterwards. Instead of eating while they're eating, while you're standing up, running around, yelling at things, sit down and enjoy your meal. My husband always does this, and sometimes I think it's so annoying, <laughs> but I actually understand why he does it, because he cares. He cares about his life. He cares about his experiences, but he always eats like in restaurants, even if he's eating fast food. If he goes to Chick-fil-A and he's like, oh, babe, what do you want from Chick-fil-A? And I'll tell him he'll go. He will order his food. He will eat there, and then he'll come home. <laughs> and give me my food. I'm like, um, you've been gone for a long time, but he does not like letting the food get cold, wasting time in that moment and spilling food all over his car. Like he wants to enjoy his food hot and fresh and that's important to him. So he doesn't play around when it comes to sitting down and eating his meal properly. It's a really important practice that helps you to slow down. If you're at work, I remember working as a psychologist and I was always busy. I mean, my door was constantly swinging open and I would have to literally eat as I worked. Then I got to a point where I said, you know what? This is ridiculous. I deserve a lunch break. I deserve a time where I am in peace, where no one is allowed to come into my office and I'm going to eat. So I put a sign on my door that says, do not disturb during lunch when there was a lot of chaos and some people still would not follow it. They would still knock on my door and still like act like, oh, am I disturbing you? Yes, you are disturbing me. I'm eating and I'm allowed to enjoy my lunchtime without feeling bad, without feeling like I should be attending to your needs. That needs to be respected. If you're someone who has a very busy job, but you are given a certain time to eat lunch, get out of there. Don't even stay there. I stopped staying in my office. I said, you know what? You, you guys don't respect this. I need to leave. And I would go and drive somewhere or I'd walk somewhere and I would sit down and eat my lunch. And I would spend time reading my Bible or just looking around or just thinking. And that was a beautiful time for me to reset. These things are important when you're a really busy person. These are practical ways for you to slow it down. Something else you can do that's really nice in terms of living slowly as a feminine woman is taking time each day where your phone is away from you. Again, living in this culture, we are bombarded constantly with images, with our phone, with people trying to reach us and responding to memes. And I mean, sometimes I look at my inbox and I have like 40 something messages from someone and it's all memes. And they expect me to actually watch all the memes and give them reactions. And I'm like, who has time for this? 
who actually has time to be sitting here looking at all of these memes and looking at all of these reels? I mean, that is time I could be using doing something more productive. And it's not to say it's not fun, but you can't send me 10 reels every day and expect me to actually watch all of them. That's too much. <laughs> and I, you, my love, have to be the one to say, no, put the brakes on it. So whether it's other people imposing things on you or you just feeling like you have to watch this show or you're going to be behind or you have to listen to this new sermon that came out, you don't. There should be time each day for your own beautiful mental health to put your phone completely away. For those of you ladies who are believers, who love God, who love Jesus, something I want to remind you about is the importance of taking a Sabbath. This is actually a commandment that so many of us completely ignore. We think about do not steal, do not kill, do not covet your neighbor's wife and all these things. But what about the Sabbath? What about the fact that God commanded you to take one day and rest? He knows what you need. He made you. This is in the Bible. This is not up for negotiation. This is part of your walk as a beautiful daughter of the king to rest. And when you don't rest, God knows because everything God does is for your good. He loves you. He knows that if you don't do this, something is going to fall. Something is going to break down. He's trying to keep you alive. He's trying to keep you healthy. He's trying to keep your mind free. And he wants you to take time to think about how blessed you are, what he's done for you. In Exodus, it actually says, The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, you must observe my Sabbaths, for it is a sign between me and you throughout generations, so that you will know that I am Yahweh who sets you apart. Observe the Sabbath, for it is holy to you. Work may be done for six days, but on the seventh day, there must be a Sabbath of complete rest dedicated to the Lord. This is also important to God. All of the slow living, all this stuff always comes back to God because we are always trying to find him in some way. A lot of times you don't realize he's already given you this as a gift. So as part of your obedience to God is to take time to rest. And some of you will not give God even one whole day to put everything away and relax and think about him and his love and his goodness and celebrate that. But what you can do to start is just put your phone away, love. That Netflix show that everyone's talking about, you don't need to watch it. All the news, all the news media and the news gossip sites and all of the drama from celebrities, you don't need to watch any of that. There's nothing in that that's actually going to benefit you. I don't watch any news. I don't listen to anything that could possibly disrupt my peace. So many of you struggle with nightmares and bad dreams and insane things happening it's because of what you are consuming. That stuff is not harmless. Take the time to start saying, no, I don't need that. And a lot of it is locked up in your phone. I recommend putting your phone away at least a few hours before bed or not touching your phone for a few hours in the morning as you get ready and you get your day going taking days to fast or taking periods of time to fast from your phone, fast from social media. And it's not just social media, it's podcasts, it's YouTube, it's everything. It's everything connected to that device. Learn to say no and enjoy the life that's happening right in front of you. Enjoy your children that are growing up, that are learning, that are exploring this beautiful world. Be there for that. Enjoy your pets and your fruits and your vegetables and the air and the clouds and all the small things that people who are sitting in a jail cell right now 
would love to be able to see. And I can talk about this all day and all night, all the different ways you can live slower because there are a lot. But again, take time, look around your home and think about ways that you can start to free up things, free up your space, free up your time, free up your body, free up, take out some clothes, donate them, take out some makeup. It's spoiled. It's old. Take out some of those wigs that you're not ever going to wear. Take out some of that perfume that you never spray. Get rid of some of that jewelry. Get rid of some of those books that you are never going to read. Start decluttering your life. Open up your windows. It's a beautiful way to live more peacefully. It's just opening your windows every day and taking in some fresh air from outside, bringing that beautiful air into your home. I will also do a video coming up soon about just ways to make your home smell beautiful. That's also a really nice way to live in a slower manner is to invite some aroma into your environment and declutter, clear out, clear out so that you can let in. And the last thing I'll leave you with, my love, is that work is important. Work is necessary. There's nothing wrong with work. In the femininity space, a lot of times you hear conversation around just being, just existing, just relaxing. And that's important. And I have to talk about this because some of you ladies just don't know how to relax. It is important, but work is also important. It also feels so good to have a day where you spent doing something important, delivering cookies to people or passing out donuts or rallying for something important in your community or a cause, doing philanthropy work, cleaning your home, doing things for your family, scheduling appointments, getting dirty and getting some things done in your house. That feels so good at the end of the day when you sleep and you've done work, it's satisfying. It's a beautiful way to enjoy your rest. Work is important because you need work in order to have. If you do nothing, you will have nothing. So it's important for you to work, but it's also important for you to rest. It's also important for you to slow down. It's also important for you to know enough is enough. It's also important for you to have a wisdom enough to say, this was great for this period of my life, but now that I'm here, I'm done with that. I've been to all the clubs. That's enough. I don't need loud music blasting in my eardrums and drinks spilling all over me to have a good time. Learn how to mature past some of those things that are no longer serving you and take in the things that are appropriate for wherever you are now in life. Stop holding on to everything. Let go. So for those of you who practice slow living, who are aware of this way of life. For those of you who enjoy this, tell me what things you have done to start slowing down. I've had conversations with single mothers who work, 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 and they want more hours, more jobs. More. And I'm like, but what about your children? Do you need more money to put them in more daycares and more activities? Or could you actually stop working a little bit take off some of those hours and spend time with them with their homework instead of putting them in an after-school program. All this money that you're working so hard for, you could actually be getting something better, which is time with your children. And for a lot of people, these conversations were life changers. They thought they were losing when actually these were opportunities for them to win. What have you done to start taking things off of your plate? What have you done to be able to slow down in life? What have you done that actually adds value to your life? Let me know in the comments below. And um, yeah, take some time to like follow different people that are not always throwing things in your face, that are not giving you a bunch of fast transitions and watching shorts and things all the time that are always just so fast, 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 stimulating. Try to start watching content that's a little bit slower pace that doesn't have all of this mental stimuli. Try to 
do something a little bit different and see how it affects your life, how it affects your mental health. Take some time to also be that peace for someone else. Take that time to learn how to listen to people when they speak without interrupting them. Take time to give longer hugs where you're not the first one to pull away. Take time to write a letter to someone, to give someone a compliment. Take time to do things that really add value into the lives of someone else. You be that reminder of slow living to the next person. And perhaps we can incorporate more femininity, more intentional living into our society. I love you all so much. And I thank you for spending time with me today. Listen to my podcast. If you enjoy listening to, again, slower paced content where we talk about things that matter, that impact your life, impact your femininity, impact your purpose here on this earth, then you can listen to The Dr. Daft Show on all podcast platforms. And you can also keep up with me on social media at Dr. Michelle Daff on Instagram and at the Dr. Daff Show. Until next time, my love, in all things you do, make a feminine impression. Bye.